what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my joan of arc guide for rise of kingdoms now i've talked about joan of arc a ton of times in my different videos and if you saw my recent video about my epic commander tier list um joan of arc came in at the s tier for the epic commanders and a lot of people have been asking me questions about joan of arc and uh, more specifically people understand that she's really really powerful but i don't know if a lot of people understand what exactly she's doing and why she uh ends up in the s tier right um everybody knows that she is pretty much the best gatherer in the game because she is a 25 percent gathering speed universal um but she does a lot of other stuff on the battlefield that's really really useful and she is to my knowledge the only epic commander that's ever gotten nerfed um I, I don't remember if any of the other ones did um but to my knowledge i think she's the only one that's ever gotten a nerf so with that being said let's talk about joan of arc in terms of how do you actually get joan of arc well she comes with the france civilization so of course if you started your game with france then you will have started with joan of arc automatically no need to summon her or anything like that um and of course when you do start with a civilization there will be um, these main quests over here uh, and as you go through these main quests some of the milestones will actually give you sculptures of whatever commander you started with and so you'll be getting a steady stream of Joan of Arc through that if you started with France if you didn't start with France of course you can get Joan of Arc from the tavern you can get sculptures of her from silver chests you can also get summons or sculptures of her from the golden chest which is super super useful there's also the france event that comes around every once in a while where you know the specific civilization events um when you complete daily tasks they give you items that you can exchange for um uh, epic commander sculptures or gold keys or resources or whatever um there's i think you can get about 20 sculptures of her every time that event comes around you also can get her from the expedition shop so you can get her from the metal store here either she'll show up in the uh, epic commander um, spot right here or she'll show up in the refresh chances on the bottom you also can obviously convert your universal commander sculptures into Joan of Arc which wouldn't be a bad idea because she is very very good now with that being said um, let's talk about uh, Joan of Arc in terms of her talent build so she has the integration tree the gathering tree and the support tree and as you'll see here I have her built as a gatherer the reason for this is because I actually think she's a pretty good uh, secondary commander. Now, a lot of um, people have been testing over the last couple of months using her as a primary because the support tree has the 150 rage regeneration with rejuvenate, which is really good. Um, the only problem that I have with using Joan of Arc as a primary is that she is a commander that is probably going to get targeted on the open field so anytime that you see a Joan of Arc on the open field usually people will swarm Joan of Arc because she's not that tanky um, and she also doesn't deal that much damage um, she's more of a support commander as you know is evidenced by the support tree but she's of no use if she is dead so when you have her as a primary she's kind of a target um, so a lot of times what people will do is they'll set her as a secondary and this puts her little frame behind whoever the primary is so it's harder to tell who the secondary is in an army uh, as opposed to a primary unless you um, scout them or whatever the case is but with that being said it's usually safer for her to be a secondary so the way that I have her built is as a gatherer um, of course you want to to get the superior tools up here but when you're building her out and you want to shoot up here for the more the better first then come over and finish these two over here then make your way up to superior tools and then put the modified axle talent points in there as well if you have her past level 40 you can start to make your way up to the rejuvenate tree in case she does get attacked as a gatherer i don't know you're probably going to die regardless if that's the case but um you might as well grab rejuvenate because why not the other thing holding her back from being a primary is that the integration tree isn't that great i mean you do have fresh recruits over here which is pretty cool um it is for a mixed army so it's kind of nice but at the same time um i'm just not that excited about the integration tree i don't know i haven't really played around with it too too much 
but again in my opinion um even though support tree is pretty good with rejuvenate over here and you do have some other utilities like the slow from cage of thorns and stuff like that you also have burning blood uh which is really nice and you do um get hasty departure um so there is some cool stuff to be had in the support tree i just i think the skill tree still technically i believe regenerates rage better than the support tree even though this rejuvenate is better here than rejuvenate on the skill tree i do think that the skill tree is a little bit better at restoring rage so with that being said i use joan of arc as a secondary again there is um there are builds that people use with her as primary and they are very valid they're very decent builds but again i think that she is very prone to being targeted in the open field and because of that i would rather use her as a secondary and that's exactly what i do so with that being said let's take a look at uh, um, her skills so her first skill and uh, i'm gonna read actually the pre-expertise version without the expertise it says in the next two seconds joan of arc grants her own troops and nearby friendly forces a powerful buff that increases infantry units health by 30 percent uh, increases cavalry units defense by 30 percent increases archer units attack by 30 percent and grants an additional 50 rage per second so that's per second for two seconds that's 80 rage anytime her active skill goes off um with her expertise it actually changes to four seconds which means instead of generating 80 rage over two seconds um she's generating 50 rage per second for four seconds which is 200 rage super super good um and then the buffs are actually the same for every single troop type so this is um and i know there's there's other skills i don't want to get into but this right here divine revelation is the reason that joan of arc is s tier now originally people were um using this it says and nearby friendly forces right and so anytime joan of arc is near your allies not only your own armies but your allied armies as well this skill does buff them so what this means is that if you are in the open fields and you're fighting and joan of arc's uh divine revelation active skill goes off not only is your army going to get a buff not only is all of your nearby armies also going to get a buff but any of your alliance members nearby with an army will also get a buff so what this means is that joan of arc is going to be buffing everybody with these huge buffs i mean that's 90 percent of of stats right there right and it's a buff to every single troop type so even if the person next to you only is using cavalry well you're still buffering cavalry cavalry by 30 percent and even if they only have infantry well you're still buffing infantry by 30 percent which is super super good now a couple of things to know is that this doesn't show you like when the animation goes off it doesn't show you a a area of the effectiveness of this skill um it seems to be decently large so it's probably about i've heard it's about the size of um isong ye's expertise aoe it might be a little bit bigger than that as well so it's still kind of a smaller area i mean you don't have to be right on top of one another but um as long as you're relatively next to your um, alliance members then this will go off which is really really awesome now the other thing to note about this is that um there is no cooldown right we don't see any cooldown in the text we also don't see um, any cap on the number of armies that this can buff so you know if this only buffed five armies well that wouldn't be that great but there's no cap here so if you are next to your alliance members in an open field just crazy all-out war um you can be buffing 10 of your alliance members all at the same time which is super insane right and consider the fact that you might be buffing t5 players right you're, you're buffing a t5 player maybe with a an expertise uh richard and isong a like you're really a applying a huge buff to to all of your players um that you're playing with and some of them are going to be way stronger than others and that buff is only going to be exponentially better uh, on those players which is really really awesome so this skill is the reason why she is an s tier commander so i've had a lot of people commenting on my um beginner's guide video saying that joan of arc was actually nerfed and that she no longer buffs your alliance members only your your own armies right on the battlefield um and so in order to test this i actually um, asked my alliance to test it we had one of my alliance members fighting a another alliance member who left the alliance so essentially they had no alliance on the battlefield they were fighting my alliance member and i had nearby a third alliance member who was in the alliance um standing next to them fighting a barbarian and when joan of arc's active skill went off in the battle between the two players it showed up in the battle reports of the third player who was not in the battle but was nearby fighting a barbarian um that player got joan of arc's buff so 
it is confirmed this skill does work still on buffing your alliance members as well as long as they're nearby again it's kind of a small area but it's you know it's a, about the size if you just want a general idea think of of uh isonge's aoe so i'll put some proof on the screen if i haven't already i'll show the battle report um but i just want you guys to i wanted to describe to you what exactly what that battle port report is showing um it's showing a player who is fighting a barbarian next to an alliance member who is using a joan of arc against another player um and when that joan of arc's skill went off it buffed the alliance member nearby which is the report that you're looking at her second skill is the maid of orleans it says increases troops gathering speed by 25 percent and load by 25 percent which is really good um this is the highest universal gathering speed bonus in the game which is awesome because she's an epic which means everybody will have access to joan of arc so again if you're going to be using her as a secondary you might as well build her as a gatherer to capitalize on the fact that she not only gathers really fast but she's going to be able to bring a ton of stuff with her so this means that you can send her to the alliance um the alliance nodes that are built by your alliance um and she'll be taking home a ton more resources than normal you also have the third skill of holy holy refuge so troops normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to heal a portion of slightly wounded units by a healing factor of 450 effect can only trigger once every five seconds so there is a little little bit of a cool out, cool down there um but it is only a 10 percent trigger chance so you know it's not it wouldn't have been that likely to go off um, more than once every five seconds anyway you know based on probability but this is still cool this adds essentially a little bit of bulkiness a little bit of tankiness to your own army um this healing factor isn't that big uh because if you take a look at somebody like for example Pelagius, same exact thing. Troops normal attacks have a 10% chance to heal some slightly wounded units by the same healing factor, but it's every second for the next two seconds. And this doesn't seem to have a cooldown. So I don't know. Um, Pelagius's fourth skill is just seems to be better than Joan of Arc's third skill. But again, Joan of Arc is doing such an insane buff with her primary, um, whereas uh, uh, Pelagius is actually doing some uh, damage, right? So her primary skill is more useful in a support scenario than Pelagius anyway. So I can see why they would have to balance that out a little bit, um, because if this was a healing factor of 900 or something like Joan of Arc would be really, really good. And then her last skill is called uh, Saint. It is increases normal attack damage by 25%. Um, that sounds really good, right? Because increasing damage by 25% is a big deal. Um, but you have to consider that normal attack damage is not really going to be a large percentage of your damage. Um, it, of course, it depends on who your commanders are and whatever the case is. But um, in general, normal attacks aren't doing that much damage. You're really going to be doing most of your damage from skill attacks from your primary commander. So, I mean, this is this is fine it's great um the reason that she was nerfed her actually back in the day um she used to have she it, this skill used to say reduces damage taken by 25 percent which is way better like that's way better that's super tanky right super super tanky um i wish that they would have uh, like because normal attack damage to me is not that useful i kind of wish that they would have maybe if they change this to normal attack maybe give this a bigger healing factor you know it's still not as good as 25 percent damage reduction but regardless this is what we have and then again her expertise is basically just making her primary skill even better um which is awesome so if you look at joan of arc again she's buffing not only your army but all of your armies in her radius as well as, as well as all of your alliance members armies within your radius for four seconds which is great and she's regenerating 200 rage over those four seconds which is awesome if you're leveling up joan of arc i would recommend first maximize this first skill because it's just so good um if you're going to be using her for gathering which i would recommend like if you don't necessarily need her to fight right away um i would say then you should level up this skill to five then after that level up the third skill to five and then after that bring her all the way finish off this final uh skill so that's the order that i would recommend upgrading them in of course if you're using joan of arc on your farm account then i would recommend just bringing her right to two stars and hope that all of the points go into the second one because that that's really the only one you care about for your farm account um, but in general i would say the order that you should unlock these is the order that they're in which is pretty useful to know
Now, when you consider what should, who should you pair Joan of Arc with, right? I think that's a, a really big concern for people. They know that she's good, but they know that she's good as a secondary. So they don't know who should you pair her with as a primary. Um, because uh, a lot of times, again, what people do is they hear Joan of Arc's great. So they focus on Joan of Arc, they expertise her, and then they don't have anyone to use her with. Um, and so there's a couple of strategies that you could, that you could do with Joan of Arc. Um, the one that I usually like is a Scipio primary Joan of Arc secondary. Um, this, this is a very polar polarizing uh, commander pairing I mean undoubtedly the synergy is there right because neither of these commanders are dealing skill damage and neither of these commanders care which type of troop they have in their army so you really could put any type of troop in a Scipio Joan build and it's not going to really affect skill damage it's not really gonna affect any sort of other damage that they would do otherwise which makes it very versatile for the early game uh, because in the early game you're probably not gonna have the ability to fill an entire army with a single troop type um so that's a really great pairing that i love because again scipio is very um very tanky and he also brings extra troops so the benefit of that is that Joan of Arc stays on the battlefield longer because Scipio is a little bit tanky. Uh, plus she has that healing factor and she's going to be buffing this army itself. And so what you're going to be doing there is keeping this, uh, this Joan of Arc buff on the battlefield as long as you can, which is a really great strategy. The only problem is again, typically when you see a Scipio on the open field, um, he tends to get swarmed down because he doesn't really deal that much skill damage. He also doesn't really have any March speed, especially if he's got a mixed army. So it's hard for him to get away from a swarm. Um, and so that's, that's still a downside. Um, it, there's a high chance that he could get swarmed, which is unfortunate. Uh, the good thing is that his second skill kind of is a little bit of an anti swarm mechanic where anytime he's attacked when he's expertise, there's a 15% chance of him doubling his troops attack for two seconds, which is great. He also has the chance of a healing factor. Um, when his, he has has less than 40% chance of units uh, I'm sorry less than 40% of units remaining which uh, just goes really really well with some of his attack and leadership talents as you can see this is how I have him built here I think this is probably the best uh, Scipio build with the remaining points going up in this in this part of the tree there so um, that's one build that I personally have used a ton I think it's really great for the early game when you have less chance of being swarmed and when you have less chance of other players having perfectly optimized builds you also could um, put her as a secondary to Sun Tzu and the benefit of this is that Sun Tzu doesn't really care too much about infantry um, you know you could have a mixed army as well but if you do decide to go full infantry he does buff their health which is really nice he also is pretty tanky because he has that skill damage reduction um, he will be generating even more rage with his active skill which is cool so that will go on top of the 50 rage per second that Joan of Arc is bringing with her active skill and on top of that he has the skill tree and the skill tree is what's going to be um, regenerating the most amount of rage for your Joan of Arc's active skill so by doing a um, by doing a Sun Tzu primary Joan of Arc secondary what you're doing is you have a army that is generating an insane amount of rage not only because of the skill tree but because of the active skill on Sun Tzu and because of the active skill on Joan of Arc all three of those are going to compound and generate a ridiculous amount of rage, which means that Joan of Arc's active skill, the buff that she gives your allies and your armies is going to be going on constantly, right? It lasts for four seconds. And after those four seconds are up, there's a good chance that this army will have gained enough rage to have that skill go off again. So that's the benefit of doing a Sun Tzu Joan of Arc uh, combo. I've seen this combo in the um, Canyon, which is a really decent combo because Sun Tzu has the AOE, Joan of Arc has the buff that you want to go off as much as possible. I think that's a really, really great pairing as well. If you look in the legendary tier, you of course could pair Joan of Arc with Richard or with uh, Charles Martel. The reason and logic behind this is that both of those commanders are very tanky and unlikely to be swarmed in the open field. Now they do kind of lack March speed. Now, of course, Martel when expertise does have some decent March speed, um, but typically the last army on the battlefield to get swarmed 
is a tanky Richard or Charles Martel army because uh, they just they can really soak up damage um, and so because of that fact on top of the fact that they're legendary they're less likely to be attacked in the open field they're less likely to be swarmed in the open field and because of that having a Joan of Arc behind them um, makes it uh, kind of less likely that she that she will die on the battlefield and anytime that Joan of Arc stays up and stays alive is time that she's going to be buffing your armies and your allies armies as well so that's a really great pairing i think either of these two are great of course richard has the healing and everything like that damage uh jam damage reduction um on his active skill which is really cool so you know these would be probably full infantry marches if you do have them you could um if you have richard 5511 as well as martel 5511 um those would be decent uh builds to have in front of a joan of arc so a charles martel or richard primary joan of arc secondary uh, and you can bring that tanky that tanky army out on the field and kind of keep joan of arc sort of uh protected which would be pretty good now i can show you some of the equipment that i have on her but honestly this is just a bunch of gray stuff that i don't really care about um it just doesn't matter the coarse breaches here and the sturdy boots both give you a little bit of gathering speed which is nice um so that's something that you can consider there it'll just make her even faster at gathering which is kind of funny you can see that i actually got the um the, the crit went off on these so you get the special talent so that's an extra half of a percent for gathering speed on top so by having these she gets three percent more gathering speed with the crit so that's really nice to have but again if she's secondary you don't really care about the um the equipment that she has because equipment on your secondary doesn't matter which is really good with that being said guys that's all i really have for you for joan of arc hopefully this video cleared up some things again a lot of players know that she's good they know that she's great for support but they don't know exactly why she's good and so i wanted to break down that first skill for you and explain a couple of different pairings that i think are really great um you also it's worth noting i guess that you could pair her secondary to pelagius in the early game or secondary to Boudica in the early game um those two pairings would be decent because they're both also rege uh, regenerating some rage pelagius also has that healing uh, kind of same thing here with Boudica. She regenerates, um, which one of these? This one uh, regenerates rage, right? Yeah, 50 rage every time she uses a skill. So, early game, you could pick those two as well. Those are other options, but besides that um i'm pretty sure i covered everything that i wanted to talk about uh, about joan of arc so with that knowledge hopefully you guys are able to utilize her in the open fields she's amazing for free-to-play players not because of her insane damage but because she's going to be buffing the other players on the fields that maybe have uh, an insane um troops or insane numbers of expertise uh, legendaries things like that she's super super good so if you guys have any questions about Joan of Arc make sure to drop them in the comments section below I will be really happy to answer them for you of course make sure you drop a like on the video it really does help the channel out a ton I really do appreciate that if you're new around here make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video as always my social media links are going to be in the description below you can find me uh, my discord is down there if you want to come and ask any questions about uh rise of kingdoms or anything like that there's a ton of people in there that can answer those questions for you as well if you couldn't tell um, I do live stream on twitch so you can go to my twitch link in the description below I do live stream rise of kingdoms usually every single week and if you see me live I can of course answer any questions for you in that time which is really awesome so make sure you drop a follow down there as well as all of my other social media links and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on the arc I will talk to you guys again soon peace